before we begin, I just want to apologize again for the echo. It starts in about 10 minutes in. I have no idea why it happened. I try to fix it, but it some, must be something with OBS. I just wanted to apologize out front for that. So after the 10 minute mark, it's gonna you're gonna hear a weird echo from me. But um, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, be sure to support Demon Artie over on her Patreon. There's gonna be a link in the description below. Also, give her a like and a follow over on Twitter at Artie Demon. And if you guys are enjoying these types of collaboration videos, it was a ton of fun to do. Uh, let us know what kind of topics you want us to cover. Uh, any other guests who want to uh, maybe do a video with me, just uh, just leave it in the comments below. And uh, on to the video. Welcome everyone back to the Crimson 15 Podcast. I'm your host Crimson Sin. I have a very special guest with us today. You've seen her fan art. She did the thumbnail. Uh, you've, you've been seeing it all, all of last year, but now you finally get to hear her talk and go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello everyone. I'm Demonardi. Nice to meet you. And we're here today because we're talking cartoons and specifically we're talking She-Ra and what we thought of season four and kind of what we want to see in season five. So for me, uh, season four, I, I like the fact that I'm like, oh, 13 episodes, they're going to be able to tell more story and do some more things. But it just feels like they, they wasted a lot of time and then they rushed through the end and left us with tons of questions. Like, well, how did you feel about season like, four? Like as always. <laughs> uh, well, I think it wasn't that bad uh, if uh, we're like uh, remembering uh, episodes. Uh, season one and uh, comparing to season four, it's kind of b better actually. I think I we think... can see more dynamic and other, but we have uh, the same stupid jokes and uh, animation. Like <laughs> it's funny, like uh, because of, like the breaks between seasons, and I watch like other shows like Carmen San Diego and stuff like that, and then I come back to She-Ra, and I'm like, ugh, the, the, the art, <laughs> it just hurts my eyes, like, especially the animation, because the the actual still images, you know, like the line art, doesn't look that bad. It's when they yeah. move it around, does it actually start to look pretty bad? Yeah, maybe it's because uh, of a lot of animation errors or something like that. Uh, and uh, um, I hope in new season we will have like a better animation, like a uh, more expensive animation. But who wants to spend money on some cartoons, you know? It, it's funny because uh, DreamWorks it, they they make some amazing looking shows, and then Shira, yeah. which is supposed to like it gets all the news. Like every website is always talking about Shira, but they don't seem to put yeah, any money but... towards it. You know, when they are talking about Shira, I always see like about some, something political, but no one's talking about the plot or the animation or characters. Like, I hope you understand me. Oh yeah, yeah, because I with this season, season four, it, it, most of the articles were about double trouble, and it was always about oh non-binary this representation this, never about the character or the actual story. Which is kind of weird yeah. when you think about it. I mean, it's okay to have a character like that, but you need to write a character, not uh, like he, what. He, uh, I hope you understand me because I want to say you you need to write a character, not uh, like what he represents. Yeah, you, or something. Story and character need to come before whatever message yeah. you want to tell, and I think they they Who wanted to. Double the trouble. Person way where uh, they come from or something like it will be really interesting or i yeah, don't there's, know there's no backstory uh, double trouble like yeah. oh i can shape shift and like okay is there any more of his people is he the only one like could you imagine an army of these people they'd be devastating because yeah. you could like infiltrate a whole town and replace everybody yeah it's like uh, do you remember hantara like we don't know her backstory like we know she was in Horde and then she like ran away, but why? Uh, we like never met her again after like uh, this story about in episode two. Yeah, they found I the think. ship. Yeah, and bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye, Huntara. And then she made like some comment about, oh, I need to be like with my people. And then, you know, okay, that's a good way to get rid of her for the rest of the season. Like a and princess of cr Crimson Waste or... <laughs> yeah, it was like, so I guess she was like the leader of her gang or whatever. But the, there was no, it didn't go any deeper than that. And then I'm like, oh, okay. And she left like, supposedly her friends and never to care about him again. 
Yeah. But um, I kind of like her. I want to see her again, but she, I guess <laughs> she'll never come back. Which is sad because Huntara, she like they redesigned her. They made her more of like a uh, bodybuilder type, which is fine, I guess. Like, yeah, just... I don't mind that. It's it's looking kind of cool, but mm. they, they got... just made her for a reason to like. Oh, we have a Huntara character. Let's just put her in and do nothing. She's just a plot. Just, she should no. have been there should have been more to her character than just oh and then first off she kind of was like a bad guy like she betrayed them and then she instantly went 180 which is really weird kind of like how uh, Adora did that like she was in the horde and then she met Bo and Glimmer and okay I want to go to the other side now like there was she had no conflict about it yeah but um so what about Let's talk about our main characters. Yeah, um, it's, it's funny how this season they put Bo and Adora like together throughout the whole entire season. When it was like before, it was always Bo, Glimmer, and Adora. So it was kind of yeah. it was cool that they split up the trio. But I just don't think, especially with Glimmer, they just kind of made her go crazy. But with like Bo, he kind of stayed the same of that kind of wishy washy kind of guy. There was that one yeah. moment where he did stand up to Glimmer, which I thought was really cool when he told her, like, no, like, he, I'm not want to go forward with this plan to start this Heart of Etheria thing because it's going to kill everybody because he literally yeah. saw what it did. And that was cool. But in the very next episode, he was right back to Bo being, oh, no, is Glimmer going to like me? Is she still my friend? And it's like, oh, geez. Yeah. Also, do you remember uh, the prom episode? <laughs> 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 when Glimmer was like uh, jealous of Bo because uh, he is like hanging out with our other people, and she like, what? She, she she like jealous about it, and I totally see it in the season four uh, when he, he he said no to her, and she like angry. Yeah. Because uh, like, is he is he her like only friend? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny because I guess Glimmer's only other friend would be Shadow Weaver, which is really, really weird yeah. considering that Shadow Weaver kidnapped her and like tortured her and like took her magic away. Remember, like she like, I don't know, poisoned yeah. her powers. I, I, I don't know why she like trusted her. <laughs> it's so uh, weird. <laughs> I could if imagine... I was in her place, I'm like, no, 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 go go to jail. Yeah, remember when you tied me up yeah. and uh, poisoned my powers and almost killed me? Oh, be my teacher now. It's, I, it boggles my mind that she just instantly forgave her. Also, she like, uh, Glimmers know that uh, she uh, Shadow Weaver was like a father's teacher and she was like a traitor. And yeah. she still believed in her. <laughs> And up to this moment, she thought her father died and Shadow Weaver was part of the army that killed her father, you know, and as far as she yeah. knows. And like nothing. <laughs> it's, it. I don't know, maybe it's just like her hunger for power and she was willing yeah. to teach her magic. She didn't care. No, I see like uh, Glimmer and uh, Shadow Weaver. They have a lot of similarities, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they're both hungry for power and they like always saying like oh you don't believe me i know better yeah because like i remember that because when uh, shadow weaver first wanted to use that magic to, to you know to defeat the horde when she was light spinner she said all the same exact things glimmer did oh you're just afraid of my power you 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 don't you're not willing to do the what needs to be done and does all the things that glimmer said about the heart of etheria also glimmer like uh always saying like I am the queen. You should listen to me. It's kind of cool, actually, but um, you you know that you are wrong, but you still want to like show your friend that you are right. And uh, I don't know why we should do it. She's like evil in this in this season. It's really weird how it, part of what she wanted to do was, of course, she wants to save everyone. But at the same time, it's always the option that gives her the most power. And it's like, uh, would you be willing to save everyone if it meant you lost everything? 
And I don't think Glimmer would be willing to do that. I think she likes being the one in charge. She likes being able to tell everybody what to do. And now, now no one can stop me because like her mom would always, uh, Queen Angela would always, you know, be like, Glimmer, think about this. Well, you have to, you know, have a real plan. You can't just rush in there. But now she's queen. She can just, there's no one to stop her. And we saw what the results of that was. She ended up almost killing everybody. Yeah. Also, I... I want to see how, like, uh, uh, what happened is affecting her in season five. Because she made like um, bad things, a lot of bad things. She, she like almost destroyed the whole <laughs> because she's like a spoiled brat. In that final episode, she like regretted what happened, like when she started to feel her power get like drained and everything. But like, it's almost to the point to where you look at her like, yeah, exactly, dummy. <laughs> what did you think was going to happen? The exact thing that, she, you know, your friends told you was going to happen, happened and you didn't believe in them. So that's going to be, she needs to feel bad. I, I honestly thought in this season she was going to have like nightmares about the, the way, way she, she treated her mother. And, and she would she have, have like, like all these like conflicting emotions. Like the last thing I said to my mom was, "You're a coward," but she doesn't even seem to care that her mom's dead. Like it doesn't affect her in any way. She's like kind of care about it when, uh, in the first episode, she's like afraid that her mother is dead, and but in other episodes, she's like, eh, "I'm the cool queen, yippee!" Yeah, it's so weird because. You would think a parent dying, especially in the way that she treated her mom, it would like have a lasting effect. No, it was like a couple of hours during the coronation and then she got over it. <laughs> you know, um, I really wondered, uh, do you think all uh, like princesses lost uh, their powers or? It's really weird because the rune stones were affected. Like you can see that they got like a, like that, uh, they count off as corruption or not, but like, they like were, when they got like drained. the sword, like stuck uh, all this all power uh, from those rune stones, uh, and uh, I think like no magic. Because, Bye. Because Glimmer tried to use her magic, and when she was up on the the ship with Lord Prime, and like it just fizzled out. I'm wondering if that's from the rune stones being like, you know, powered out, or that's just because she's off planet. And she's like, her connection got, you know, because it can't traverse the distance. But that would be interesting if they lost all their magic. And that would be like uh, them going around and like healing their rune stones could be a plot point in season five. Yeah, but uh, um, we don't know uh, how long will be season five. Yeah, is it going to be three uh, episodes? Because <laughs> they, they pulled off. Not going episode. down. It's... Yeah, I hope uh, season five will be longer than uh, season four, and will explain everything and show everything. That's a, that was this show has a lot of. Uh, they don't show you anything. Like there's this whole season was filled with battles we never saw. There was like the one where Bo and Glimmer are talking, or it's Bo and Adora were talking to Glimmer, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we we beat the horde and we did this thing," and like we didn't get to see it. They just talked about it. And I'm like. This is a, an animated show, an action show. Show us the action. Don't have it happen off screen and then have Sometimes some Sometimes I'm forgetting this is a, an action show or not like um, Kids for car Cartoon. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> cartoon for Kids. It's... Like, uh, universe, like, it's have battle, but, but it's most of, like, it's mostly cam comedy. Yeah, or, or it's or like, like um, teen drama. Sorry about my accent. No, that's fine. <laughs> it's just, yeah, like you said, it's sometimes you really do forget, oh, yeah, this is an action-adventure show. There should be battles and, uh, you know, characters going on journeys and doing things. But then we get, uh, like, the mystery episode with Mermista where it's just all, oh, stupid jokes. Oh, and no. <laughs> people I, I hate it as episode, actually, because of Mermista. <laughs> That episode's so bad because, I mean, just from a logical standpoint, and they're like, oh, who could it be? Well, maybe the girl who just joined that we don't know and really can't trust, maybe it's her. Like, <laughs> no one ever thought it was Flutter. Oh, no, she's pink. We, we can trust her because she's pink. Oh, yeah, because pink <laughs> equals good. 
But yeah. <laughs> Um, so we talked a little bit about Bo, a little about Glimmer. See, uh, Glimmer's up on the, I guess, the mothership with Horde Prime. And I'm thinking to myself, did, do you think they rescue her right away? Or that's something like she doesn't get rescued to like, it's like the fu- season finale where they finally are able to get up there and do like a rescue plan. Maybe they want to like find uh, ways to, to the cosmos and build a, a rocket or something like that. Like build an army, but mm. because they have it, Mara it, ship, but that's like the only yeah. ship they have, and Horde Prime has what thousands of ships. There's going to be no way she, they're going to be able to get up there without getting like laser blasted out of the sky. So like, what uh, Horde people uh, will like uh, join the rebellion and like um, with all the ch- technology and. Uh, and Trapta could like uh, build uh, a lot of rockets because she likes science. Meh. Yeah, she'll, she'll probably end up building. Yeah, that. You know what? I really liked that uh, that gorilla looking mech that she built on Beast Island. Yeah. She she needs to build like an army of those things because that that was actually pretty cool. Yeah, like like this gorilla gorilla is like flying. <laughs> a flying gorilla. Now that's something. <laughs> Oh, that's my god. <laughs> <laughs> so, I I still can't, you know, the, the the only logical way is they build some way to get up there, but how how much time can pass before Horde Prime just says forget it? Like, I know he wants the weapon, but he doesn't seem like a patient man. He doesn't really seem like someone who yeah. wants to take his time. I mean, after a couple of days, he's going to be like forget it kill all these princesses who cares i'll move on to the next planet i just, I just want to see how they're going to be able to do that yeah i i i think about it a lot actually i'm like hmm he will be like oh i'm very interesting if i want it i i i like take it and uh, uh or he will be like if you don't get it uh, get uh, this weapon I'm not gonna kill you. I'm gonna blow up uh, this whole planet. Like because deal, there's... like deal with the devil, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very dangerous game because uh, Catra like straight up lied to him, saying, you know, there is a weapon here, but now there's no way to access it. But Catra even said, "Oh, I know how it works, so you can't kill me." And I'm thinking to myself, Catra, he's gonna want to know details, and you don't have any. So I don't know how this girl's gonna pull this off and still live. <laughs> Do you remember Catra never had a real fight? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, the closest thing she had to a fight was Tongue Lasher. And even then, it was just her dodging and then beating her opponent with one hit. I am so sick of that. <laughs> Let her have a real fight. It, she can still win. Just show her get you know hit a couple of times and the fight goes back and forth. And then you, as the audience, you, you don't know who's going to win. But now if Catra's in a fight, we automatically know she's going to win. And she's gonna win easily, and I hate that. This show is like more about feelings and uh, uh, like comedy, <laughs> but it's not <laughs> more about action and war. <laughs> it's... Oh, war is this, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. By the way, there's this giant war that's you know, thousands of people are being killed and everything, and they just don't like. When they were in this season, when Hordak was walking around with his giant arm cannon and he was blowing up places, they're like, oh, wow, that's cool. Like, they're marching on towns, they're doing raids, they're doing, like, you know, war stuff. And, and then it's a good be, it's a good to be friends with friends or something. <laughs> oh, God, that song. Oh, my God, that song. I, I, while watching that episode, I usually, when I, when I do my reviews, I'll watch the episode and then, you know, I'm done. I had to stop like seven times <laughs> during that episode because I couldn't take it. The, the damn songs are just ridiculous and they go on forever. I will never, ever watch a single that episode ever again in my life. You know, I think uh, in Shira, music is actually pretty good, but the songs... Oh. <laughs> yeah, like the uh, background, like uh, when it's like uh, the... Or what I want to say, like the... when it's No, no words, no lyrics. It's just like music. It, it's pretty good, but man, yeah. they were trying to be funny, or I don't know what they were trying to pull off, but it was awful. Also, I really want to, like, in season five, uh, to change uh, the theme song, oh, like yeah. the opening. Uh, they, they I really added, want to something new. 
they changed out people's clothes, like they gave uh, Catcher her new outfit, but it's the same animation. There's just like a little like, yeah. palette swap. I'm like, that's so lazy. Give me a brand new opener. Yeah. You know, uh, also, oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, it's like, uh, I like how in anime they do that. Like between seasons, like it'll have a brand new opening and a new song and a new animation. And I just think even though technically it doesn't add to the story, but it lets you know, oh, yeah, this is something new. This is a new season. We're starting something different, but, yeah. you know, cheap. Like with JoJo, you know, every JoJo opening is like, wow, the coolest one. <laughs> it's because they want to wow their audience they want to show you like look what we can do and i don't really think yeah. the shira crew really yep. cares <laughs> you know opening should be like a showing everything was about the show like cool action or a comedy somewhere and also like cool shots with shira but um this opening is like really girly and <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I never really liked the song. It's a little too uh, poppy, like, you know, like... Uh... <laughs> it's really funny, because as soon as it like, starts, I'm like, I skip. Like, I drag the bar and just skip it to the, to the actual part of the episode. Miraculous Ladybug have a bit better opening, you know. <laughs> Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. But, yeah, that would be cool to see that, so... Our other main character, which is arguably not a main character, Adora. Um, oh, yeah. I, I want to see about her more. Like, I want to see her as a character. Like, she is, I don't know. I don't want to say her. I want to, like, say that she is Mary Sue, but she's really boring. She's, like, like there. And, and, and. and that's all. Yeah, it's funny because this, like, this season was really about Glimmer, and and Adora just kind and of was Katra. and Catra, and they gotta stop doing that. You can have character episodes like, oh, this episode's gonna be all about Catra, but not whole seasons. Shira's name is in the freaking title. It should be about her. She should be the hero. She should be the one doing all the cool things, that you know are the main plot points. But we have Adora who just kind of walks around and gets all mopey about being She-Ra for some reason on, like, on Beast Island. I don't know where that came from. This is season four. You think she would be over not believing in herself. I mean, she's defeated how many enemies and done so many things with her friends. Then all of a sudden she's like, I don't believe in my power. I'm like, what? Where's this coming from? Like, uh, yeah. Also, I want to see her uh, with a new design. You um, know what? I like... Uh, I like when characters change. Like they gave Glimmer a new outfit. It's kind of like a mixture of hers and her mom's. Yeah, it looks all right. They gave Catra like this uh, kind of like one arm sleeve looking thing. It's pretty cool. But yeah, that's it. Like no one else changed. I want to see all princes like a little changing or something. Uh, I want to see. I really want to see something new on Adora. Maybe it uh, reveals that she's like a new. Um, a new like human being or something like she's a new character she she's changed because she lost her sword and she like should be uh her friends are lost and uh, uh the whole prime and she becomes like more serious and conf confident about her and her powers it's funny because she still wears her horde uniform it just doesn't have the signet yeah. on the back and I remember, I don't know if it was Noel Stevenson, but it was somebody on the uh, crew said, oh, she wears that because she doesn't feel like she fits in at Bright Moon. I'm like, what? You, you've been fighting alongside these princesses for four seasons, risking life and limb on the battlefield, and you don't feel like you fit in with them? I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. So she doesn't trust her fellow princesses? Like, what? I understand if Scorpio uh, does does yeah. this, but uh, Adora, like, she's like in the first or second episode, like, okay, they're evil. I want to be like uh, with uh, good people and be on the um, side of good, but she's still not fitting all this whole time. It, it, That's strange. And, and everyone accepts her. 
It's not like people like, oh, we can't trust her. She used to be with the whore. No, the, everyone instantly loves her. I mean, Glimmer, it took her one episode, but like once the queen said, oh, you know, she and all that stuff, you're, you could be the protector of Bright Moon. Everyone loves her. Yeah. So how could she not feel yeah, like... Like this but butterfly people. <laughs> yeah, that can't fly. They yeah, go. like only when they don't trust her, they show only with episode in first seasons. Like with uh, when they revealed uh, to Queen Angela when she like made Swift Wind. <laughs> <laughs> the the best character. <laughs> also in uh, the uh, kingdom uh, in Perfumous in Perfumous Kingdom, uh, they're like, "Oh, you're not Shira. She's just a girl." My God, <laughs> <laughs> and that's all. Everyone but, like trust her and ex accept her. I yeah, don't know. There, there was there was no like she didn't have to really earn anyone's trust. They just like oh the legendary Shira and they just bought into it. So that whole excuse I think was just so they didn't have to design something new. But like you said, with a, a character redesign, it can show the character growth. It can show that oh she's going through a change. You know inwardly and then she's going to express that change outwardly she's going to have a new outfit new hair and if there was only somebody who could do a redesign and like draw something or put something on the internet that was really cool looking do you know do you know anyone who can do something like that no <laughs> <laughs> i know i want to put a picture up of someone who drew something like that and if you know who it is you can just throw it and let me know but um you did a redesign for Shira for season five, and it's it's fantastic. You did three different ones. I think they all look great, but I like the one with the braids because I kind of like blonde hair and braids. I think it's a it's kind of like a cool like warrior princess look. But all three of them look great. Thank you. <laughs> it, I just feel like like you said, since she's kind of like she broke her sword, and she she definitely needs a different look because her hair's down now and i think just even that little change made her look more interesting <laughs> yeah also i want to see more personality of hers and i want to uh swift swift wind to shut up <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird well, like you are bo bonding with an animal like he like animal doesn't talking and uh, you can see like if, uh, she's caring about animals or something like be more, be more like Mara. Oh man, Mara is. Uh, if the show would have been about Mara the whole time, she's just this. This is kind. She's uh, she's powerful. She, she it's funny. She is more like the original Shira than Adora is. Yeah. I don't know if Maybe they did that on purpose, like... but everyone loves Mara. I don't think there's anyone who watches the show or does reviews and says, "Oh yeah, Mara was awful." Like nobody thinks that. Yeah, true. If she was the main character, I would, I like, yeah, I would watch the show. I wouldn't even mind like a prequel season where it's just all about how did Mara become she -Ra? Yeah. Like, did they choose her? Is it like the Avatar where it's like a destiny? Like, what is it that makes someone worthy of becoming she -Ra? Like, did she have to go through training? Was there like a selection process? I, I also, we can them. see a planet of first ones. That would be cool. Yeah. See, here's the thing. Are first ones Eternians? Because if Shira, Adora is a first one, that would mean Prince Adam's a first one. So Don't they... forget, they don't have a right to uh, <laughs> master the universe. It's it's, it's so, so weird to, to think of Adora without thinking about Prince Adam. Like, I, I, when I... When I see when Shira, Shira, I automatically think of He-Man. When I think of He-Man, I think of Shira because they're twins, they're a family, but it doesn't yeah. seem like we're ever going to get that in this show. In the original, they have a lot of like episodes together, mm -hmm. then they help each other. Also, they have like a, a little life of uh, sister and brother. Like Sometimes they, um, they love each other, but uh, they want to like joke in about the, their, their self or, or something, like brothers and sisters do. Yeah, like, like a family, and that I love that aspect of the uh, the story, and it's just we don't get that. Or I don't know, like I don't even know if they're going to be able to tease 
a Prince Adam, Adam, even if it's just like a voice, like somehow she, there's a portal, she ends up going back to her home, and then you hear yeah. someone say, who are you in my castle? You know, I'm Prince Adam, a bit of and just that alone would just like make my head explode. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would just Maybe love that. Not like said anything like, "Who are you? I'm Adam," and and, and like, the end. Yeah, yeah like it just phased the yeah, phase yeah, straight Thank you for money. <laughs> See y'all next, next year. year. It, that, would that would be, be so, so cool. cool. Crimson Saint here. Thanks for watching the video. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to sub, like, share, and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single upload. If you have any tips or story ideas, hit us up on Twitter at C15Podcast, or better yet, join our Discord server. Link in the description below.